All right, here's the rocker arm assembly. Uh, you can see it is a bit of a disaster. It is just absolutely filthy. And we've got rust going on and everything else. But remember the tractor was running with this in it. So, uh, so all the rockers do move on the shaft. But anyway, this has to be cleaned, obviously. This is gonna be uh, kind of a multi-step process. I'm probably gonna shoot it with some brake clean first outside, get the big chunks off of it. Maybe take a wire brush to it and then we'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And then after that, I'll probably uh, let it soak in evaporust for a day or so. And I wanted to get a good look at this assembly before uh, I take it apart so I can remember how to put it back together. All right, well, first of all, this is actually a two-piece shaft. Um, I'll show you. And then from there, these components, uh, you know, come off individually. Each one of these rockers does have a bushing inside there with an oil hole. All right, guys, if you didn't already know this, on this particular head, the center port is intake. The outside ports on each side are exhaust. So on this side, cylinders four and three share this one intake port. And on this side, cylinders two and one share this intake port. Right, here's the rocker arm assembly uh, pretty much all reassembled with the exception of the uh, inner pieces there but it really turned out good they all move nice and freely so after I get the uh, valves done and the head cleaned up these will be ready to uh, reinstall here's what they look like before And here's what they look like now. All right, while I'm waiting on some other stuff, I went ahead and began the cleaning process on the head. I got most of the mating surfaces all clean.
the head itself looks pretty good, but we've got some issue with the valve seats and the valves. Starting with uh, number one, you can see how beat up it is. At first glance, number two and number three look pretty good, but if we get close, you can see that lip right there. That is a physical uh, ridge, a change in diameter from here to here. There is a dip there, and I will show you that corresponds exactly to the shape of the valve head. So even though this surface here is nice and smooth all the way around, we've got a big problem here. We've, this groove should not be in there. Uh, this next one is not as bad. It's actually pretty decent. Um, this one is also pretty good. Decent. And then we get to this one. You can see this one has that same kind of ridge going on. And I'll show you just a minute what the valves look like. Uh, same with this one. There's just a little bit of a lip right there. Otherwise, it looks good. And then this one looks kind of like the number one did. It's, uh, it's just kind of dinged up and worn. So basically, they all need to be uh, cut. So I'm going to have to do the same thing I did on that Farmall Cub video. And just cut these a little bit to get the... Uh, surfaces even again especially the ones with that little ridge right there uh, where is it this one this one here is the worst so this is number one that's the uh, valve seat that had the uh, what i called you know the dings and the imperfections in it kind of matches the way the uh, face of the valve looks too right so in my opinion this valve is uh reusable we might have to uh, cut that as well but I want you to take note of the thickness between the uh, mating surface there and the top of the head see how thick that is right there all right here's number two this is the one that had that big lip on the uh, valve seat so look at this it doesn't get much more obvious than that that's a direct correlation to the uh, damage on the valve seat and then the top is thinner than that number one valve was. And there's an even thinner one than that I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, here it is. This is number three. We got the same massive uh, wear going on as number two. But look how thin number three is in relation to the top of the valve. So here's number one and number three side by side. And uh, number three should look like number one because on this tractor, the exhaust valves and the intake valves are exactly the same. So we've got some serious wear going on there. Number four is an exhaust valve. It actually looks pretty good. Number five is another exhaust valve. It's just a little dinged up. It really doesn't look bad at all. But number six is an intake and it looks like number three. You see how thin it is on top? And it's got that big ridge right there. Same with number seven. Number eight and number one are pretty much the same. Um, the surface is just a little bit dinged up, but otherwise the valve looks pretty good. So I think this could be reusable. So long story short, all the exhaust valves and valve seats are actually decent. A couple of them definitely need to be uh, ground, but uh, they're reusable. However, all of the intake valves, in my opinion, are not reusable. Again, this is number three. That's one of the worst ones. I was fortunate to find a brand new valve to replace it. You can see side by side. I mean, there's no comparison. That, I mean, I wonder if these were like original valves on the tractor from 1952. So that's what I'm going to do next. We'll uh, go ahead and cut all eight valve seats. And then we'll install the four new intake valves, reuse the four exhaust valves, lap all them in, and we should be good to go at that point. All right, it's time to start cutting some valve seats here. This is the tool that I got for this project. It's a New Way brand, which is the same company 
of the tool that I got for the Farmall Cub project, which is right here. Anyway, this is really a nice quality tool. Um, you can adjust all five teeth in and out with these little Allen screws. When I was doing the Farmall Cub project, I purchased this little pilot rod. So of course this part sticks down in the valve guide and then the teeth sit flush against the valve seat and you spin it. But this tool keeps everything perfectly concentric. So having a good pilot rod is just as important in my opinion as having a good tool because if your pilot rod is sloppy, uh, you're, you know, you're not gonna get a precision cut on the valve seat. So when I bought this, I was looking on the company website and said, well, I'm gonna need a pilot rod also. If I remember correctly, the pilot rod that I needed for this tractor was $122 just for one of them. And that kind of took me back a little bit and I said, okay, well, I'm not gonna order that. I just can't justify paying 122 bucks for a rod. I did purchase their T-handle though. You can see the top of the tool is a hexagon. Well, the tool fits right over the top of that perfectly. And it gives you a lot of good leverage for uh, turning and using the tool. So these two things came in the mail and then I thought, well, what am I gonna do for the pilot rod? And well, I now have a operational lathe, that Logan lathe back there. So I came back here to my uh, scrap metal bucket and I found a rod that was suitable. And I ended up making my own uh, pilot rod. Turned out really good. The bottom part is the uh, diameter that fits inside the valve guide. And the top is a smaller diameter. That's where the tool fits over. It took me a while to, uh, to do it because I wanted to get the diameters, you know, perfect or as close to perfect as I could. And I really think it turned out great. Uh, like I said, it took me longer than it should have, but uh, not bragging, I really nailed the diameter because it just spins perfectly on. There's no slop. I cut it to length so the handle would fit. I've already started using it. It fits perfectly. It really works well. Let me go show you. All right, let's take a look at number three here. Cutting valve seats is pretty boring stuff, so I'm not gonna film the, you know, the whole thing. The exhaust valve seat actually looks pretty good on this one, but the intake has that big ring, just like, um, I guess it was number one that had it. And I just wanna show you the progress of this cutter and how it works. This pilot rod isn't gonna be rotating, but uh, I just like to put some oil on it anyway just in case there's some dirt or anything. I don't want to scratch the inside of the uh, valve guide, that's all. Look how nicely that fits in there. All right, um, so here's the cutter. I'm gonna put some oil on each blade. And we just start the process, slowly but surely, a little bit at a time. You can already see it's starting to remove material and it's getting shiny already. See, look at all that material on the uh, blades already. So what I do periodically is just, I just sprayed the teeth with some brake clean, get them all cleaned up. I wipe the seat itself out, put oil on each tooth again, and then repeat the process. Okay, I'm starting to get down into the uh, damaged part now where that ridge is, so that's good. So of course I'm going to do this on every single valve seat. It's probably going to take me hours to do this. This is something you don't want to uh, rush. You want to make sure you get it right because if your valves don't seal, what's the point, right?
So here I'm doing sort of a hillbilly uh, leakage test on the valves and valve seats. I put all four spark plugs back in, filled each combustion chamber up with water, and I'm simply watching for leaks inside the ports. Before I started the cutting and lapping process, I actually did this test on all four cylinders, just like this, and all four of them were leaking. And some of them were leaking quite badly. Water was like coming out the port like a waterfall. And another big piece of this puzzle that I've got solved is the Babbitt in the connecting rods. I found a gentleman to do the work for me. It only took him a few days to get them done and he mailed them back and here they are. And it looks like he media blasted all the rods. So they're all nice and clean. And he also made up a set of brass shims. I've got this one taken apart already. And he told me on the phone that these would be a thickness of a two thousandths each. I think what's happening here is he's got a bunch just pressed together. And then it's going to be my job to uh, peel those apart from each other and use them if necessary and as necessary. And I'm not sure how I'm going to get them apart, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's put it back the way it was for now. I think I'll probably spray some WD-40 or something on the outside of all the rods because this is just bare metal and uh, I don't want it to flash rust while we're waiting for the pistons and things. So at this point, it's going to be a couple months yet. Uh, actually, it's really an unknown time. I don't know when it will be when I'm able to get a hold of some new pistons and sleeves. But we're, uh, we're making progress, we're getting things done. Again, finding that guy to do that Baba work was, uh, was a big piece of the puzzle, so I'm happy about that. That's just a quick update if anybody's wondering how things were going on the case project. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted on this project and hopefully I'll have those parts sooner than later. Take care. And except for the carburetor being filthy, everything was in really good condition. Uh, the float was even adjusted properly. The needle looked good. So I just disassembled it, gave it everything a really good cleaning. And I just put some black paint on it for now. Maybe eventually we'll paint it uh, flambeau red, which is the case color. But I don't have any of that right now, so I just painted it black. But it really turned out good, and that'll be ready to go as well.